Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, we are doing the ultimate giveaway. Because last time, remember, we did the no, top No, we're 10. doing a shelf or sell segment. Yeah, and this is shelf or sell. Half shelf, half sell. Last week, though, last we week doesn't added $1,000 worth of games what? into my personal collection. You mean all of these are going? Which means this time, no. we are calling... A thousand dollars worth of games. No, I see a couple here that aren't they going come in, anywhere. They come out. It's no. how natural collections work. So it's a good thing that we are on a unified team right we now. We will have words. And we are going to commit to getting rid no. of all of these games. No. So let's start going by them. And in case you're not familiar with what the I format, the segment. Give them a reason to subscribe! I don't know what we're saying! Apparently, there's no reason to subscribe to this channel. We certainly don't do a series based around our personal collection with in-depth reviews, gameplays that we've started producing. This is a whole thing we're working on. Oh, it is? Okay. This is a whole thing we're working on. This is our Shelf or Sell segment. Every Saturday, you can watch us diagnose and rip apart our own personal collection as we merge forces. And along with a vlog that we will post on our weekly activities. Yeah. Alongside that, we've also, over the last week or so, started catching up on our middle game, and we've started doing an official review format and an official gameplay and other types of coverage around the games we're getting rid of. We always have a game stuck here in the middle, and this week it's going to be Aeon's End. No, I want, like, five more of these stuck in the middle. Aeon's End is going to be the game that's stuck in the middle. Why is it here? It's because I've owned it for a long time and never actually got it to the table. This is supposed to be one of the greatest deck-building games Ooh. in existence. A mechanic that I love, yeah. and you're fairly fond of. Very fond of. And Aeon's End is a campaign-based one where you're going on this journey together. It's a cooperative deck-builder and I've heard amazing things. I've just never taken the time to table it. What's well, not to like? I mean, deck building, campaign, story, you should be falling head over heels for this. I'll tell you what's not to like, the fact that it's sat on my shelf. If I don't play it, I don't need to keep it. I don't need to own it. We need to get Correct. this to the table, and this series is going to force me to do so because... Oh, you're taking Alex's idea. You're copying. You I'm just not. Posted a no, no, no. We, we did it first, remember? He's posting a video about games he has to play within the next 12 months. We, we did it first with Black Rose Wars. Oh. Yeah. I hear. So Alex actually stole from us. I'm not putting a timeline on this, but in the next month or two, I'd like to play it and actually get coverage. Let's do an update on two of our easiest conversations. So, okay. this then, was our middle for about two weeks ago. Yep. We got to the table. And we are selling it. It yeah. was a great experience to play once, but not the amount of times that we, we didn't, played it. We didn't play it once. I know, I said not the amount of times we played it. That is too many experiences for I this game. I actually was still enjoying the game. I, I'm not fighting for it. I don't need it to go, but I also don't need it to stay. Uh, it's fun. I think it's a great family game, and I think it does a lot of good things for the hobby. It is too luck-based. Not enough mitigation. Yeah. It's just, it It can't stay in our household because it makes us fight. Yes, that's the reason. <laughs> There's uh, plenty Cuphead, of games here that will make us fight. Cuphead is one of those middle games that we were very intrigued about, and it is not staying. I believe you still want to do some coverage based on the video game and comparing the two. I'm considering it. It depends. So. The Great Plains, a game that was added to our collection as Just of last week. last week, part of the $1,000 board game haul. And we have given it a play, and it is not for given us. Given it multiple plays. Yeah. And it is not for you. It's not for me. I have critiques. I don't find it having enough technical skills required. I think it... Your decisions are not important. You can make so many great decisions that the it, there isn't one great decision. I like one great decision and then like five mediocre decisions. This has like eight mediocre decisions, I but no real bad I disagree with her. I think it has interesting, compelling decisions. It is a quick 15-minute area control game, and this one's being rehomed because Alex agrees with me, at least at the moment. Cool. So, hey, can live in his caution. It's not going to last a <laughs> year. He this, has so many more games. This one, because it's a two-player and she didn't love it and I thought it was good, uh, Alex was compelled by it. So it's going to move over to Alex's house. It'll be in his collection. Maybe you'll see it on his sell list at some point down the road. But for us, we can't justify holding on to two-player games if you're not playing them with me. Correct. I can get a lot of other great two-player games to the table with other people, but I don't need to hold on to a decent one by myself. Now I think we should talk about some of the games that are staying. We yep. reach over so here. So we're going to talk about the seventh continent. 
This is a very, very good solo game. Oh, an amazing solo game. I have not dived into it yet. It was beyond my breadth when I was interested in it, and then things caught up to me and there was way too much coverage to do. I still want to cover it. Yeah. And I still want to dive into it. I you, hear it is a fantastic experience. <laughs> you know what you don't need to do? Have five copies of it that we have in the basement. You also don't need the giant Kickstarter exclusive copy. You don't need the expansion pack. You don't need the multiple modules that I have. You don't need $600 worth of Seventh Continent content downstairs, partially opened, and unloved and unplayed. Here's the reality of the Seventh Continent. We have a small box. Incredible, incredible solo game, but they came out with a small box and it killed, killed my need or desire to own the big box. And I don't like the game with multiple people. I think I might enjoy it with you. I might enjoy it with you Ooh, because lucky. we'll be playing a solo game together in a lot of ways. What's funny is that you're calling this a big box compared to so many of our big boxes. This does not even take up that much room. Yeah, if a game, Calyx. if a game, if a game is six hundred dollars worth of content on my shelf, it's a big box, and you start combining them together. And then, uh, it's a big enough box. So this is a game that we will be keeping because it no. has lots of minis that I like. You don't get out and you don't play with minis by themselves. I want to paint them. Okay, these are already washed for the record and we have so many minis in games that we both enjoy and both play that we don't need to keep Lords of Hellas. Make you deal? Make you deal? So Lords of Ragnarok deal. is coming. We do not get rid of this. It does not leave our house <laughs> until the new one enters. You're not painting these minis. We're not playing Lords I of Hellas. I want to play. We, you're, not, you're not playing Lords of Hellas. We got Just Lords of Hellas. Just until Ragnarok comes. Just in case I get the urge <laughs> to play. Please. We, 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 no. We, we got Lords of Hellas so we could dive into it and prepare for Lords of Ragnarok. We've had good experiences with the game. Mm -hmm. We really have. But it is not our favorite area control game of all time. And I still have the Lords of Ragnarok prototype right behind this camera. And it is a better version of the game for both of us. Do we get to keep the prototype As forever? far as I know, we're keeping it. Cool. Fine. So, yeah. here's the thing. Lords of Hellas has an audience. I think it's a pretty amazing game. Yeah. But I've now played a version of it that I already pr prefer. I prefer the prototype version over this finished version of Lords of Hellas. We may keep this to do a full gameplay or one last swing, a big review, something like that, but this is not this is not staying in our collection. Of Athena. It's and too much content, it's too big of a box, and it's worth too much for it to sit unplayed on our shelf. We're subbing it out for Lords of Ragnarok. We we just have to. Fine. We just have to. Alright. Okay. Fast. Vast. This is going to be Vast the Crystal Caverns with the Fearsome Foes and the Miniatures Expansion, a game that I bought when I was buying all of Leader Games titles. Mysterious Manor we've done coverage of on the channel. I have played this version with Jan. Uh, he had his own copy, which is no longer part of my collection because we had a sub-collection together for a while. And, of course, we've played Root, we've played Oath, we've played a lot. Here's the thing. I like Root with the asymmetric character factions. Mm -hmm. I've never been entirely sold on Vast. Mysterious Manor did it well, did it fun, but we never played it. We never justified playing it. This is going to be one that we just won't get to the table. What's special about it? Crystal Caverns is one of the first and most compelling asymmetric player faction games that came to the market. Okay. In this game, you're controlling a variety of different factions, just like in Root, but they're all doing a similar thing. They're diving into a dungeon with their own objectives. The warrior wants to slay the dragon. The dragon wants to escape the dungeon. The dungeon wants to collapse upon everyone. The, you know, in, in mysterious manners... So A is putting B into place, B is putting C into place, C, C is, putting is putting D, D into place, place D, D is putting, putting A into place. place. That's the rope of it. I don't like having to abide by prescripted roles and mandate what I do. You you are abiding by some prescripted roles, but the interesting thing about these games is everyone is balancing the game at the same time they're playing the game. Root so it only Root, works at four players, basically. It works four. at higher player counts for sure, and Root is the best example of this. You have to Think be really about careful Root. what factions you bring into Root, because if you bring in an unbalanced yep. mix, then it doesn't work. And not only that, but when you play Root, you also have to stick to your faction's goal. You're playing not only your mechanic, but you're responsible for balancing another faction. Big war factions can't be left uncontested. The Vagabond cannot be left invested in and not beat up upon. Mm -hmm. It just unbalances the game. This is that, except I have no need or reason to table it more. Okay. So, vast... 
I, uh, I love the concept. I really have enjoyed diving into the games. I, I don't need this version. Fine. Just don't. All right. Off to the Plenty side. more things here that I want to fight you on. Off to the side. You can go ahead and drop that Seventh Continent box. You can go and drop the Warlords box. Me, so. What? Warlords? That's the Warlords box. Mm, but this has all the minis. That is the one with the minis. We can open it? We cannot. Yes. We've already done that on camera. I know, but they liked it so much. Let's talk about a Simon title. This is going to be Massive Darkness, the original. Wow. Yeah. We're getting rid of this. But there's minis. There are minis. I haven't played this, to be honest. You haven't played this. Have you played the new Massive Darkness? No. Okay. Massive Darkness is a cooperative game of dungeon crawling from one to six yeah. players, ages four and up. It's a very famous dungeon so crawler. I love a zombie side. A zombie side is the epitome of a dungeon crawler to me. How is this different? Uh, How well, is this better? Zombie side isn't quite a dungeon crawler. It is in some ways. It's not in other ways. A dungeon crawler not only has dudes on the map and, and upgrades and boards expansions and stuff, but it also unveils itself while you play in some ways. And so Team here... Cthulhu Death May Die? Uh, Cthulhu Death May Die would be, yes, a dungeon crawler. Also by Seema. Also by Seema. So what makes Massive Darkness yeah. so, so special? So Massive Darkness is one of their classic dungeon crawling romps. You're playing through a lot of uh, uh, classic versions of heroes with mages and knights and warriors and ogres and, and, and these big beastly creatures. And it has a really intricate leveling system with a lot of cool factions that you're playing against. And you like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, mm -hmm. like those classic fantasy archetypes. Massive Darkness did that really well in this space. Okay. Here's the issue. I was keeping this version of the game because Massive Darkness 2 is one of my most anticipated games of the, of the, the millennium, I think. I mean, that's getting harder and harder to say because there's so many great games that have came out. Yeah. Massive Darkness 2 was incredible. Every player had their own intricate little mechanic system that they were playing with. You played with. it as a prototype? We did. Every character had their own little asymmetric player faction and puzzle they were solving for. The gameplay was simplified in a way that made it more accessible to get into because this one's really, really hard yeah. to continue playing through. But also, the story was fun and it was hard. It was really Ooh. hard. This is backwards compatible. What Everything in this box, the minis, the characters, is transferable to the new copy. Okay. That's why I was keeping this. Right? Yeah. When does new Here's copy... Here's the thing. Okay. We are never mixing old copy into new copy. Why? It's just not a thing we do. We don't play a game enough, deep enough, to ever justify going backwards. And the new copy, we are getting all in. New characters, new expansions, new mechanics, new framework. I hear. They, they did backwards compatible to make people like me that have the original yeah. happy and excited to get the new one. But I'm never playing this one with the new one coming. As long as there is a new one coming, then you can get rid of this yeah. one. So, Massive Darkness, while I hath loved you so much... Wait, what is this doing on the table? Isle you of Cats. You hit it. The Isle no. of Cats. Scoot it over this here. This is a fantastic game. Scoot it over here. I have here. played this multiple times with Alex, Rena, and Ricky. Ricky is fantastic at this game. You have a boat, and you I'm, are moving your cats. Mm -hmm. It is a Tetris-like... Polyomino. Polyomino, thank yeah. you. Tetris-like game mm -hmm. where you are placing all of your cats. You yeah. have even special cats. Mm -hmm. You have to cover up all the mice. It's great. No, it's staying. Here's the thing. I'm really glad you have Alex and a family of people that enjoy playing the Isle of Cats. The Isle of Cats is a very excellent game. It's a very good game. But... We never table it. We never table it. This has been in three states away for the entirety never, of our... I our... never... I have better polyomino games that I like more. Baron Park, Feast for Odin. Like, I just don't get this one off the shelf. No, I like this better than Baron Park. You've never played Feast for Odin. Exactly. That's why I didn't bring <laughs> it up. I couldn't say I liked it better than that. You want a timeline? Do you have Project L? Uh, I don't. You get me Project L, I give you Isle of Cats. Trading Isle of Cats for Project L? I really like Project L. Not even a timeline on it. You're willing to full up trade two polyomino games, one for the other. Yeah. Because Alex has this one. Ah, uh, <laughs> I see. So, she so is, I know it's a block she away. She is still playing his collection. Interesting. Project L is less table space. It it is. It is, it is easier, easier to, to play. It is, I played it like I a like, few weeks ago. I like the aesthetic of it. The only issue... The mouth feels fantastic. I don't know if you've tried those pieces. The They're only great. issue is I like the Isle of Cats more than I like Project L. <laughs> well... It just takes up less space. <laughs> your decision point 
I like them both as polyomino games. You can also bring Feast of Odin to the table you and don't I'll wanna, play it. You don't want a timeline on this? No. Forever. No? Forever's a great timeline. <laughs> I love cats. They're so pretty and colorful. I like it. I like well, the aesthetic of it. Oh, okay. How about this? Let's let the audience vote. If you're watching to this point... You're basically choosing me or Are Jesse. you voting for Shira or me? I don't think we need the Isle of Cats. I don't think we're going to play it that much. And we have a copy down the street with the people that we would play it with already owning it. And Rena apparently isn't getting rid of it. So It's actually a Ricky game. It's a Ricky game. That's even harder to get rid of. Correct. So, are you voting for Shira to keep this game? Or are you voting for Jesse to go ahead and clear up some shelf space. And get me Project L, of course. Uh, so this one, this one I am putting a timeline on. You cannot get rid of it, or it's a condition. You cannot get rid of it until we have tabled it. I've tabled it. Until we oh, I've, have tabled I've it. I've tabled it. I want to play all of the Lacerda series. Con it is my goal. It is my goal because there is another YouTube channel who plays these games and they are good at it and I am in competition now because <laughs> my competitiveness got straight because I want to have You want to you want to be able to play the best of the best with the best of the best. Yes, yeah. I want to be skilled enough and intelligent enough to play a game like the Lacerda series. And so you cannot get rid of this until I've had a chance I'm, to play it. I'm I'm okay putting a single play again on this game. In fact, I'm okay bringing some content here to the channel. I think it would be good to do. Here's the thing. Kanban EV, it just won't stay in the collection. The Lucerta games are massive and hard to table, and there's a lot of great ones. And they're all great, don't get me wrong. Which the ones issue are is, you keeping? I know there's the Gallerist. On Mars, the Gallerist. I still need, I still need to plan. play. I don't want the escape plan. I want to play them all. We can are you going to get the Weather plan. Machine? Uh, the Weather Machine hopefully will come in. We did okay. some coverage on it. That is a hard game. That I is know. a heavy game. I know. But it's so good. Uh... I, and, and then I need to play this Xenos is, still. This is part of my project of getting into Euros. Sure. And so, you cannot deny me my project. No, 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 no. We, we will play this. I'm okay with putting a slow timeline on this. Okay. But I'm letting the Five audience years. know. Fantastic. I'm letting the audience know. We will get this to the table one more time. But then after that, this is one of the lower rated ones for me. It's a lot of mechanic. It's a lot of programming. And you have a worker that's going down the middle of your worker actions, driving the game it's, it's a really hard programming engine to sort of get up and running. Uh, I think I think you will be okay after you've played more of the Lacerda games to let this one go That's fine. without... I just have to have equal opportunity. And then Hoplomachus from Chip Theory. Hoplomachus <laughs> from Chip Theory Games. And it's not just this version of Hoplomachus. I have the entire original set with all the play mats. And I have Origins, which is the new two-player. And I'm getting the solo. That's the only reason why you're getting rid of this is because you're getting the new one. The new one's solo only. Oh. So I'm not getting rid of Origins because Origins maintains the two-player competitive nature of this. This we'll is play a Origins. this is a two-player competitive head-to-head -head gladiatorial arena game. Fantastic. It's a really really incredible system and puzzle. And honestly, I own all of it because I get absorbed in these types of games. I don't table it much, though. And when I have tabled it, and when I have wanted to table it, even as a solo puzzle, Origins is still the one I go to. Okay. And with the brand new one coming out that is the best version of the solo version of this system, I just don't need the back catalog. I don't care that it's integratable and it, it, expansions and modules and different tribes and stuff can be played across factions. I don't need that much content. Unless I love it, and we love it, and we play it 50 times, then I can spend whatever I need to get it back. But right now... It's giant, it's massive, and we're just not playing it. My complaint against it, because I haven't played it yet, is that it doesn't fit into a calyx very nicely. And so that's my main complaint against it. Also, when you start looking at it, Shira, this one looks outdated. Okay. Origins, Origins of the new one, not that the mechanics are, but the aesthetic. Origins of the new one shut down the aesthetic on this old version of it. And this old version is a really, really good, solid engine, but I like pretty games as well. So... Poplamachus, it is going to be on our sell list. So I have saved a couple games, as you can nope. see. I succeeded. I saved the Lacerda game. I saved Isle of Cats. Mm -mm. Um, you sacrificed Isle of Cats to another game. You didn't con You didn't convince me that you're you buying it. You added the audience is deciding, and they're going to vote in my favor. Oh. You voted on the contingency 
that all we have to do is play Kanban once. I'm fine with that. I can do a quick refresher and get it to the table in the next week or two. Then it's up on the sell list. If I like it, that's a longer debate. If you like it, we'll have to do a shelf for sell review and coverage. Yeah. Where we hard argue, because I think for me it's one of the weakest. It's not one of the weakest. So you have the content of playing really other strong lesser game. games. So it's you... a really strong game, but the mechanics of it are the weakest for me and what want, I like. Do you want to introduce me to the other lesser games before this, so that then I have something to compare it to? I mean, we'll start working through things. You're slowly diving in. You played Container this weekend. I did play. Container. Played the Estates. I did. Yeah. So you're uh, you're slowly digging your teeth into it. Alex is ordering Age of Steam. Ooh. I know. You played Age of Steam last week and promised to teach me. I did. Me. So, with that, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this series, let us know. What else you want to see? What games do you want to be in the middle hot zone? And are you enjoying watching our collection develop? Yeah. If you know there is something in our collection and you're curious where it falls, comment down below. And we'll bring it to the next one or two segments and let you know where it falls. Yeah. Either way... Whatever the case, whatever, whatever you, you do, do, remember to do the important thing. You never share. You always either take it all. We do sharing sometimes. Try it again. Whatever the case. Whatever you do. Remember to do the important thing. Get out. You were going to continue? Let's no. Get out and play some games. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you. See? That's how you share the ending. No! It has been like 20 videos now where I start going and you're like, I will echo him. Perfectly. Yeah, I find the echo so much cooler than sharing. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, when we're in sync. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's go. Whatever the case. Whatever, whatever you, you do, do, remember to do the important thing. thing. Get, Get on, on play, play some games. games. We'll see you see next, next time. time. Thanks. Thank you. Which one's cooler? If you made it to this point, <laughs> like, let us know. I mean, there's like five people that watched this version of the ending. But, and they're uh, like, this one is so much cooler because yeah. Shira likes it. The yeah. back and forth is I know who my fans solid. are out there. No. You've got seven of them. This video, this video will demonstrate that. Oh, hush. <laughs> there's four comments down below going, give it to Shira. Yes, there's more than four comments. I, I guarantee. Do you know what's happening right now? What? Yeah, people are writing comments as I'm beating up on you. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. And, it's... They're, and they're telling you to get in line and get in your place. Yeah, that is probably now. Well, now they are. Now that's what they're writing. Get Absolutely. in place, Jesse. Yeah, okay. Now there's like three of those comments down below. This is going to turn into a bad video for me. No, this is a fantastic video Whew. for me.